if you don't have the youth, the next generation coming through, it's dead in the water already. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I don't understand that uh, this is a club kind of thing. I, we always, especially with Exhorter in the early days, we always made it kind of like an island of misfit kids. This is where the cast-offs come. We, we welcome those who are not wanted anywhere. As long as you come around and you're not causing problems for everybody, come on around. I don't care how different you are. The heavy metal scene in New Orleans in the mid-80s was really more about hair metal. Um, spandex, uh, the, the teased hair that, you know, it was the Judas Priest leather and spikes look was definitely being phased out by the rat poison kind of glam thing the, the metal promoters here and the venues that booked the bands they didn't want bands that played all originals they wanted bands that played an assortment of covers uh especially covers that were going to attract girls girls come the guys come the guys spend money at the bar they didn't want a band coming around playing, much less playing nothing but Metallica and Megadeth and Slayer covers, but playing their own songs. And, and but we were an original band; they weren't having it. So we, and plus we were ugly as sin. We were the ugliest band in town, I'm pretty sure. So they didn't want us for that reason as well. But yeah, the, the punk community. Uh, we had already started going to shows in the punk community, um, and you know, we got to know a lot of the people that were booking shows, the Swamp Rats, there were a group of promoters back then, I'm um, still friends with a lot of those people, and we, you know, we told them, we're like, we're, we're trying to get a gig, we just can't, they're like, come play it at one of our shows, you know, like, really? Yeah, so the first show Exhorter ever played... Uh, there were a lot of local bands, but the, the headliner of the night was No FX. We played our first show at a No FX game. One of the wisest things I've done in a long time is pick up the guitar there and, and figure out how to play these songs myself, uh, because that's going to eliminate a lot of the, the problems that come from there being a revolving door at that position. It was uh, a friend of mine from high school messaged me one day, he's like, what's your mailing address? I gave it to him and he sent me this. I was like, what the fuck? And he's like, this was Ralph's. He said, I bought this off of somebody that Ralph had sold it to. And then after Ralph died, I was like, there's nobody that should have this guitar more than Kyle. So he literally gave me this guitar. Loud enough? Yeah. Whether we're doing anything or not, band grows and that's that's a good thing but uh we're, we're blessed to have that opportunity when we come back to kind of leapfrog tears that we should have been at before uh, but like instead of coming back here we come back up here um, under card to bands like obituary and animal corpse bands we came out at the same time with but you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, if we're not right at that level, we're coming up on it. And mathematically, it shouldn't work out that way, but we've been lucky. This is definitely the longest run of the band not actually, like, stopping and becoming the phone. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that. I just, <laughs> just literally put that together right here in my uh, office. 